What's up, former party people? This is Jerry, you know, the one who actually combs his hair on the A is for Alcoholic podcast. Now, if you're finding value in listening to the AIFA podcast every week and you want to support sharing it with others, we invite you to become a sustaining monthly or per show contributor. Go to patreon.com backslash AIFA. It's super easy and it only takes a quick moment. It's about as easy as buying one of those pre-cooked space chickens from the grocery store, taking it outside, giving it a big old kiss, and kicking it into traffic. (laughs) Why would you do that? Anyway, you do you, and I'll do me. Again, go to patreon.com backslash AIFA. And with that, people, let's start the show. A is for Alcoholic is a program about recovery. My name is John and I'm an alcoholic. And my name is Jerry and I'm an alcoholic. Join us as we go through the alphabet of alcoholism one letter at a time. Let's do this. What is the uh, what is the topic for today, Jerry? You had something. Oh, it was E for everybody's do everybody's doing it. You know that song? No, Run what's that song? From Run to Jewels. Oh, I just listened to Killer Mike. He's got that. Everybody's new- doing it. Yeah, I don't remember the name of the song. That's fucked up because I love Run to Jewels. But yeah, oh, I thought we were going to do all the formality. We're sponsored by uh, this. Oh, yes. Hi, this is A's for Alcoholic. I forgot where I was for a second there, Jerry. What up? We're A's <laughs> for Alcoholic, and we're here to make your ear holes tingle. <sighs> tingle. Um, Feeling tingly, ready for some mingly, uh, talking some sobriety. <laughs> Brought to you by uh, by by Green Camel Press. Um, it is a design firm that does greeting cards, comic books, and more. GreenCamelPress.com. We also do electronic greeting cards that are a lot of fun. If you go Ooh. check us out, you can go see a bunch of our stuff at Green Camel Press on Instagram. Is where you can see most of the art. Jerry was just commenting on our last. Uh, our last one that we did, we did a we did a birthday we did a birthday for Ellen yeah. DeGeneres, and he said, "What's Ellen up?" D. He's what like, up? "What's up with you and Ellen DeGeneres?" And I was like, "I like Ellen. Who doesn't <laughs> like Ellen? She's a lot of fun." But it did I seem a little out like, of place. There's an intern that does not like her. I'm just uh, saying there has to be. I'm not saying that it's a fact, I'm, but it is a fact. But like, <laughs> there's an intern out there that's just like Ellen D. Man, she's mean as hell. <laughs> Maybe. But I shouldn't be talking bad about her because you know. No, no, no. I mean, I just—it was just—it was just a fun little thing. And uh, like I said, if you want to do something special for your special one, Jerry, I don't know. Maybe. But uh, nobody's special to me. (laughs) Valentine's Day is coming up, and birthdays and holidays and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, go go check out Green Camel Press um, on Instagram. You can come. You can see us, or go to GreenCamelPress.com and check us out. Yeah, reach out um, to those you love digitally. Digitally. Yeah. Uh, a, a is for alcoholic. <laughs> we are on the fifth letter of the alphabet today, and um, everybody's doing it. Yeah, Maybe you e. can explain to me, explain to the folks, explain to the listeners what that, where that comes from. What the everybody's doing it Everybody's is doing from? it. All right, so uh, I guess I'll do the long form because we got time to burn. <laughs> um, I was reading. I'm a... Uh, I, I, uh, I'm a frequent uh, reader of Reddit. Mm-hmm. There's a, a Reddit, uh, ask Reddit thread that had asked people, what is the one thing that, um, what is something that people do all the time mm-hmm. that's totally culturally appropriate, but is incredibly dangerous and super bad for you? And the top answer was drinking alcohol. Mm-hmm. And so I was reading through the, oh, I was like, oh, this is interesting, you know? And so I was reading through the thread and this gentleman, one of the posters, whose name I can't remember, had written, had was talking about how he had written his therapist made him write this note to himself about his resentments in regards to other people drinking. And while reading through the note, I had realized that I had mirrored a ton of those resentments. And I imagine that other people have as well, wherein that there were times in my life where I had um, attended parties or soirees or get togethers or whatever, you know, and everybody was drinking and everybody was getting drunk. And I, it made me really fucking sad. And the reason why it made me sad is because I wanted to fucking drink and get drunk, but I couldn't because there was something wrong with me, right? Mentally was what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with me in my brains. And so it would put me in a really dark place, but it's really different than, do you remember when our, our homeboy, one of our homies, the gentleman gardener got married? Yes. Was it the gentleman gardener who got married? Yes. Yes. And, 
Yes, yeah, and uh, we went to his wedding. You guys came down from Seattle, and I was sick with strep throat. Yes. And I was on... Um, uh, antibiotics. What do you call them? Antibiotics. So I couldn't drink that entire time, and I ended up caving like two days into having all you guys around, and I ended up getting hammered on antibiotics. And that was different, right? Because I knew there was at some point, like all I I would just get sick again. Who cares? Do you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't. It was nothing to it. It was similar to that feeling, but not. So it was like this. I can't because I know the cost of it now. You know, whereas before I didn't give a shit about the cost. But then in knowing the cost, I would go into, I went into this really deep self-loathing and feeling really sorry for myself because I was like, I don't get to drink anymore. There's something wrong with me. I'm broken. I don't get to drink anymore. I don't get to, you know, and that requires a really huge perspective change. And that's kind of what I wanted to discuss is, you know, that that's something that I think a lot of us go through. Everybody's doing it. I think that there's. Everybody's doing it. In, in the alcoholic mind, at least in the one that I have, and I think from what I'm hearing from you, is there's 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 always this sort of, this going back to last week, this dichotomy or this split, this fissure in your personality of when you drink and when you don't for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, for sure. I would, used to joke and say it was like a switch. It was like turning on a switch, and then all of a sudden you're a completely different person. Yeah. And... Um, so when you start thinking about that, that's this other part of your brain that still exists, you know, early on in sobriety or even, you know, years down the road. Where you're like, God damn it, why can't I do that? And that little part of your brain. And it's kind of like saying that would be kind of like saying, well, why can't I, you know, fly through the air and slam dunk a basketball? Well, you're you just not born that way. You know what I mean? Word. You were not exactly. given you were not given the physic the physicality to do it. So and, and it would be like if you just kept trying to slam dunk a basketball, jumping and then landing, you know, breaking your teeth on the back of the, you know, on the on the board or on the on the floor. You know, how many times are you going to do that? And you finally go, I, I just can't dunk like right. I can't dunk. I'll never be able to dunk. So I need to stop trying to dunk because every time I try to dunk, I end up on the floor and covered in blood and, you know, feeling miserable. And so that sort of where those resentments come in, and it, like you said, after a while, you kind of go, oh, I know the price of it, right? right. I know the cost of yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And the cost is what? Almost losing losing your health, losing right. you know any sort of happiness, losing well, my your family. S- my dignity, my, my self-respect, uh, the way I feel about myself changes. You know, those mm-hmm. are all those negatives. But I think what I was focusing more on at that point was – my pity party, you know, to be honest, to be really frank, I got really, uh, I got off on like feeling sorry for myself because I was like, I can't do this, these fucking circumstances and the way I was mm-hmm. born and my stupid fucking brain and not realizing uh, later on, you know, and, and I had kind of written the guy back to and I was like, yo, man, I know exactly what those feelings are like. I'm like, and I had to have a perspective change where I just sit down and realize and once again, it's a nautical fucking you know analogy, but it was like being mad at the fish for being able to swim and breathe underwater, and I can't, because I can't breathe underwater. No, I tried it. You, you know what I'm saying? And like to. I will die, just like fucking alcoholism. You know, like mm-hmm. I will die if I try to. You know, I'll die dumb. And and uh, I also had this per- this kind of sea change perspective change where I th- realized that I actually was lucky. It made me lucky. I, I got really valuable tools out of it. I learned really valuable things about myself. You know, like mm-hmm. I got every day, like every fucking day, they're like, I feel fucking lucky that I, I'm an alcoholic. Incredibly lucky. That's crazy talk, but it's true though, you know. There's... I lucked out because I got, I got a second chance to be able to like figure my shit out, mm-hmm. you know, and I had to do it this way. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's absolutely true. I <laughs> that idea of being a grateful alcoholic and you're like, "Well, I got to live two different lives, right?" Yeah, exactly. So I got dude. to try all this crash and burn and destruction and and not that not that that's something to to be proud of necessarily any of the no. the the fallout yeah. from it, but um it you wouldn't be able to learn those things. And and granted, there are other reasons. Like I look at my life and and you know, just the lack of any sort of um mentorship and you know any sort of you know nobody was there really to take me under the wing and say no you you don't you don't just go out and spend the rent money on tequila that you see up on the top shelf <laughs> right you know like just you, those kind of older wiser <laughs> dude mm-hmm. yeah so i didn't i didn't always have that there and um 
So you begin to learn these tools much later in life than, you know, maybe you would want to more than I than I ever wanted to. Um, but I now I'm like, oh, my God, this is I'm so yeah, I'm so grateful because what else? What would the other alternative be or what would the alternative be would be you being drunk right now? And what how yeah, much yeah. destruction could you do? Could you have done in the last three and a half or four, four and a half years? All of it. All of it. As much as I was cap- capable of, you know? You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I, it's, it's invaluable now to be able to live a much better life. And what do you do with those resentments? Do you still get those resentments four years down the road? Not as much, right? And here's the thing, too. I was, I was kind of going on that tangent, mm-hmm. like mentally, is like when they ask me, do you ever think about drinking again or getting drunk again? And I'm like, yeah, a lot. I think about drinking all the time because everybody around me is drinking. I just don't think about me drinking. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, I already, I already researched all that shit. Like I already <laughs> did all that research, man. Unless there's new studies coming out or there's, you know, it's not worth it for me. I already know where that course of study takes me, but I think about drinking in the sense that I'm always around someone I'm always around it. I, I can't even, not even at work. I can't even, wait. drunk people walk in at work. There's a drunk dude asleep in front of the shop today. You know, like that. I see that end and I see the other end where it's a ladies weekend and we're all getting fucking wild and going off the rails and want some matching tattoos. And I'm like, nah, you know, you ladies, nah, I don't know. You know, I got a thing. I got a thing I got to go to. Yeah, you guys can come interested. with if you want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Small. But I don't, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I don't really have, I have them and don't have them. Right. Like, but it's, they're, they're abstract. It's like seeing a young person now and holding a resentment against a young person because they can run faster or farther mm-hmm. or they can stay up all night fucking banging Molly and f- you know what I mean? Dancing to horrible fucking music or whatever. And those resentments are there, but they're not constructive and they're not, they don't. Yeah. It's, they don't it's more take of over, a, you know, I, I, I always like to think of it as it's a thought experiment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those, you know, those yeah. science thought experiments. So I'll yeah. think about drinking yeah. and I'll yes. think about, <clears throat> I'll think about like, man, wouldn't it be great to, and it's not even, it's not even really a daydream because halfway down that sentence, wouldn't it be great to have a beer at whatever? I'm already mm-hmm. thinking about the consequences. And I think that that, that way of thinking for everything in my life has made me a much smarter person or maybe not smarter, but I make better decisions <laughs> Yeah. when I think mm-hmm. about the consequences of my actions, which I didn't do. And so just even that tool, um, keeps me, it just keeps me in check and keeps me in line because I want to, mm. I want to, I guess I want to say somebody like, you know what, or what would really help right now? You know what would help? A fucking drink. That would make me feel better right now. But right. I say that, and ultimately what I mean is something's wrong, and I need to go figure out what it is, and I need to right. go to the right. source. And if you're throwing it out there out loud, too, at least for me, if I, I've i done it, I've thrown that out there, and it's usually meant as like a spear. Like, I, like I'm usually throwing it at the person I'm upset at. It's really mm-hmm. funny. Yeah, a few years ago, we were trying to set up a Christmas tree, and it was a total shit show, and I was getting really frustrated with my wife for some reason. And she's like, what do you need right now? Like, what do you need to make this better? Like, you need to relax. What do you need? And I'm like, I need a fucking drink is what I need. And stumbled, you know, stormed out of the room mm-hmm. to me because it felt like this spear I was hurling at her. Like, you make me want to drink, you know, <laughs> like and then later realizing like that's fucked up, you know, and going back to her and being like, yo, that was manipulative and fucked up. And I didn't mean that. I'm my brain's broken sometimes. Yeah, I got to fix that. I have resentments toward um, sometimes. You know, when I'm when I'm tending bar and people will come in and and it's like I really have to and I have to check myself because these people just want to have a good time and they're not being rude. They're not being mean. They just, you know, and this woman wants to she's like, I don't really know about this beer and that beer and I don't really like this one. And it's like my job is to get her into the right beer and find out what she likes. Exactly. Right. And so she's not there to get tear the lid off of the damn thing. She just wants a beer that tastes less like pee and more like farts i guess yeah, i guess something you know, i mean less bitter and more yeah. vanilla. You so know, whatever. so you know and it's, it's sometimes i'm like farts you know i'll think like god damn it lady like it's just a fucking beer just please just get it just drink it here <laughs> you know and, but but Here's that's not olympia shut up yeah exactly. that's not fair of me just because i can't have a beer you know yeah that's not yeah. fair mm-hmm. I, and to to have any sort to harbor resentments and of course you know 
it's a job that I chose to take. And it's, it's yeah. also, you know, there's, there's a certain level. Sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel like it was a trap that I got caught up into because, you know, the service industry can be very good money at a very young age and you yeah. can do it for a long time. And so, um, I try to remember that it's my choice and I, there's plenty of other jobs out there that I'm sure I could take, but I do pretty good at this one and I'm really just trying to host people and having a good time and they're there to eat and drink and you know, they just want to have fun. People go out on a Friday night and they just want to have yeah. a good time, Jerry, you know, yeah, it's a little not... charcuterie, a little charcuterie, <laughs> yeah, plate. a little Pinot you Noir guys and a little charcuterie. Serve the, you serve the hot nuts? No, no hot nuts. They do this really nice where it's actually like five bucks for bread, which sounds crazy because uh-huh. you know, bread's, you that know, is crazy. But it's, it's like a fresh, loaf of bread. It's like fresh baked that morning. They warm it up. They give you this little whipped like herb butter and warmed olives with it. It's, okay, well now you got it's, me. It's pretty. I mean, it's what is it? You know, it's pretty good fucking bread. I don't know if it's pretty worth five dollars, right? but it's pretty good. Do you remember fucking there was bread. that bar in Seattle we went to that always had the hot nuts, and I'm like, this mm. is fucking dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. These hot nuts are my dinner. <laughs> you know. So give me, give me your well whiskey and a bowl of hot nuts, and you got me, man. Mm-hmm. Well whiskey yeah. and a bowl of hot nuts. Yeah, it's my fucking yeah retrospective. I had a film. Um, <laughs> I had a moment the other night, um, last week. I was going to get some takeout dinner for me and my girlfriend, uh-huh. and um, the place it was like Friday night, I think, and so it was super busy, and it was going to take a while. So I was like, I'll go to the grocery store. I'm going to pick up a couple of things, and for some reason, I was like, again, because you know I've been getting been bartending again. And I was like, I wonder what kind of goofy, stupid shit is in the liquor department. And part of me is like, I got time to kill, whatever. Part of me is like, I want to go and like pass judgment on the uh, the marshmallow vodka or, yeah, you know, the cinnamon right. tequila or something. And and I'm like, what the fuck am I, you know, and I'm walking through there and I'm like, what am I doing in here? Like, what is the other part of me that's thought that this would be a place to like, maybe I should go look for some low calorie peanut butter or, you know, like (laughs) it was just this sort of weird moment I had in the store where I was like, John, you don't do this anymore. You don't get to do this. And, but here I was trying to find some sort of, you know, guava rum to laugh at, you know, only I know what you mean. And so uh, the birthday cake vodka, what the fuck? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and, and this is the, and, and so I get I get the stuff from the store I get the food we take it home we're kind of hanging out after dinner and she's like what do you smell like and I don't you know there was nothing in that uh, there was nothing there that I hadn't I hadn't I certainly hadn't imbibed anything and she's like it kind of smells like alcohol now she wasn't she wasn't accusing me of anything at all it Uh wasn't like that in the slightest She's just like this is a new smell she's new yeah she was just like this is curious and i said no nothing nothing and i started to get kind of defensive and (laughs) and seriously because usually she and and so i just said no and i i don't remember exactly what i said about it but i just got really defensive and she's like you don't usually act like that you usually just say no not drinking today or something, mm-hmm. you know, trying to be cute or oh, whatever. Yeah. And so my reaction was different. And she's like, what's up? And I was just like, I don't know, man. Like, And I told her about the grocery store and I was there. And it's like, yeah. and I was like, and part of me was angry because I was like, "You don't you know? Like in my head, I didn't say any of this. Yeah, but yeah. in my head, I'm thinking, don't you know I deal with this shit every single day? And yeah. then to, I, wa- I don't want to come home and you're going to sniff me and you're going to accuse me. And that wasn't uh, that wasn't her you, thing at all. You felt guilty, dude. You I felt, felt hella guilty because you were in the aisle. Nothing. Yes, looking, you were upskirting that motherfucker. You were looking through the little <laughs> knot hole in the fucking fence at the ladies at the nude beach, and you mm-hmm. got caught. Except I don't know how you'd smell like booze, but still, no, though, I, but I didn't. So I don't know what it was. Psychically, she psychically picked it up, right? Dude. And so, yeah. so in my brain, I'm getting Damn. all kinds of. Of guilt course. and judgment yes. and resentments and defensiveness. <laughs> right? Yeah. I've been there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just said, and I, I think, you know, I ended up expressing to her and I told her that whole story and everything was fine. And I just had right. to say, like, it's just something I've been thinking about, especially today. And I'm sorry yeah. that if I if I came across defensive. Yeah. And it's so funny because it comes and goes. That's the funny thing is I think uh commonly in society with alcoholics they tend to think of us like a movie like 
this is how it starts. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm in the liquor aisle, so that means I'm going to drink. You know what I mean? Right. And and I think sometimes we train ourselves to think that way too because you do have to be vigilant sometimes. You really do. I feel like I have to be vigilant at times, you know, with I know what I'm capable of. But I also know that like me walking through the fucking beer aisle to get yogurt and then stopping and looking at Mike's Hard Lemonade and being like, that's nasty. <laughs> That doesn't mean that. Do you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. gonna start lovingly eyeing bottles of fucking Jim Beam or something. But no. But yeah, it is funny though the way our minds work that way, right? It's like all or nothing sometimes. <sighs> well, and that was another thing I said to her too. And I, I again, this was just me being silly and defensive, but uh-huh. I, I was like, and well, but this was kind of true as well that, you know, if I was going to go off and if I was gonna go out and start drinking, it wouldn't be have a couple of nips and then brush my teeth and then come see you and hang out and pretend <laughs> yeah. like nothing happened. Yeah, everything's it would, groovy. No, it would be you, fucking, no. you know, 90 miles an hour the wrong way down the freeway. Yeah. I would want to, like, take it to the limit. And I would, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I mean, I, I always have these fantasies of, like, well, if I'm going to go kill myself with alcohol, then maybe I'll just go fly somewhere else, put it on that credit card I never use, and I'm, I'm, if I'm never going to pay it back because I'm not going to be here, then I'm just going to, like, phew, Right. You know, That's that fatalistic fucking drunk mm-hmm. in you, dude. You saw leaving Las Vegas too many times. <laughs> but you know, but I don't really feel that way, and I don't. No, you do don't. That. But it's those are those with those invasive, intrusive thoughts mm-hmm. we have. Uh, I, I think everybody has them, but I think we have. We kind of know the plan, though. I think guys like you and me know the plan a little more than some people do. You know, as far as that's concerned. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I mean, I, and this also goes along the lines of like everybody's doing it. Right. And so mm-hmm. you feel different. Like, oh, my brain works a little differently. Poor me. Like I am mm-hmm. I have a I have a uh, what, a, what is that? a disability. But yeah. it's not a disability. No. It's just. Well, and there's know, people man. who there's people who say, uh, you know, a normie, somebody who who there are people who have never had a problem with alcohol, who have still never learned any of the tools that I have today. And right. I run into them all the time. I try to avoid them as much as possible, but you know, it's yeah. so I, I just try to remind myself again to be grateful that I'm, you know, even at at 42, I get to start to grow up and be an adult. <laughs> right. And you don't even need booze to fuck your life up. You can, it's all you need is a repetitive form of action over and over again. Then mm-hmm. that shit becomes a detriment, you know? Yeah. It, could, it doesn't have to even be a substance. It can be an action. An action. Know? Gambling is right. not a substance. Yeah, you know, um, whacking off to internet porn is not a not substance. A substance. You know? yeah. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it. But these things behave that way, you know, whatever the addiction might be. So it's like that. It's dopamine, the, man. It's the it's the habit forming thing where it's like the the cue, the the action, and then the reward. And so mm-hmm. it's like trying to figure out how to replace that that action, you know. And I, I I just have to find different things that now make me happy. Like if I don't go for my walk in the morning, Jerry. I start yeah. to get all kinds of antsy, and I start to feel all like, just well, why did I wait so long, John? Now you got to go handle this. So <laughs> it's like if I go and get some sort of like even the minimal amount of exercise and get that done in the morning, then I'm mm-hmm. like, oh okay, I feel a little more centered. And so that's right. that, like that's a new thing for me. That's not something I used to do. That's a new pathway, though. You're right? forming a new habit. That's a positive habit. I'm trying. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah you're and, trying the. Yeah. And I'm trying to think if I what other like resentments do I harbor against normal people who get to drink? Um it, there's still this I mean there were times we'd go into bars and it would be beautiful and fun and exciting and you mm-hmm. know shiny and dark at the same time and Oh yeah. like it was just this beautiful mood and that people still get to enjoy that and I still think about that and go gosh that was there were some moments where it was like it'd be cold and wet and rainy out and you kind of duck into some dark little spot and it's it's warm yeah. and dry in there and maybe they're playing your favorite song and whatever and it's, that's the glitz though right <laughs> that's all the sparkles do the halloween decorations man and for somebody who doesn't have a problem with alcohol that can be a really awesome thing and that can be a Fuck fucking yeah. magical night hell yeah that could be the start of a relationship Guys have, like me and John, it's the no. end of a relationship. You know, we have, but, yeah, we have, we have learned <laughs> the consequences of those. Yeah, the end of a relationship for sure. But yeah. the consequences of those actions, and 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 like, I think it all the way through. I think, I think the bender through. 
you know? And so I think that's where that sort of fatalistic thoughts come from is not that I want to go and kill myself with alcohol in some sort of dramatic fashion, because it would probably end up not being so dramatic. It would probably be really depressing and lonely. Yeah, and then um, you probably wouldn't even die, dude. You'd probably yeah, just exactly. end up on would... life support or something stupid like that. And... Yeah, Ugh. but it was... Yeah, anyway. It's, it, no, but it's not just that. It's that it's I true. try to think it through to its final conclusion, which right. everything that I've learned and everything that I have that people have shared with me is that people end up in jail. They end up broke. They end up doing... Broke in. Th- broke in. They end up yeah. dead. They end up hurting people they really care about, and that's like... Yep. What kind of you know? I don't. I just don't want to be that that brand of asshole. I mean, if nah, the- <laughs> nah, that's the worst brand of asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just resentments, and again, I just try to remind myself of why people go out to have a good time because it's fun for them, and it's it's not something that is. It doesn't debilitate their life the way it did mine or yours. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And I guess the the point of it too, you know, I, I I called my dad and I was like, fucking bummed on the verge of tears. I like drove home almost crying from this one the first time it happened, you know. Mm-hmm. And my dad's like, he said the exact same thing we said. You know, you just you know what you're capable of, man. Like at the end of the day, you're luckier for it and you've shown strength, you know. And that's kind of what I, I guess I wanted to express even in this is like, yo, man, like if you're out there and you're fucking sad and feeling bad because all your homies are fucking getting lit and you can't like. Don't don't even stress it, dude. You're showing in, like I showing incredible strength. You're showing incredible strength by not doing that. You're showing it's not even a willpower thing anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. just like a life change. I don't know. It's just there's nothing wrong with you. I there's, mean, there's probably some shit wrong with you out there, listener, because you listen to us. But but there's I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. It's hard to verbalize, you know, like exactly the change I went through mentally, you know, after having that conversation, the the perspective shift I had to take, you know, your personality changes, I think. And not not like you lose being the same funny or cool or interesting person. In fact, I think you become more of those things. Yeah. You get to actually be you Mm -hmm. instead of that fake fucked up version of you. you Right. Yeah, yeah, and so it becomes this thing where yeah, you're just a just that your personality shifts and you go, "Oh, okay, so I I don't have to be so insecure all the time. I can right. I can be a little more secure in myself. I can still have fun. I can still I can even be around people who yeah. who who drink and I can even be around people who drink too much for a little while right. and then cut out <laughs> and then cut just, out. You know, just steal some from their house and bounce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but don't. But yeah, <laughs> don't. something big like a lamp, like a lamp or something. Just a coffee table. Just hoist it and walk mm. it out. I mean, it's yeah. it's a practical joke, right? It's, it's and a, then you have a new coffee table. Mm. Yeah, lamp pranks. Um. Lamp pranks, dude. This is mine now. <laughs> prank. Relax, bro. It's a prank. Yes. Um. So yeah, it's it. I just accepting the fact that other people don't. You don't get to do what everybody gets to do and that's true of a lot of things man that's not just alcohol yeah it's not like i'm sitting here sad as fuck because i can't fly an f-16 fighter jet dude Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying or like your analogy about being like michael jordan like i have to tell my daughter all the time i'm like listen that kid is good at doing that thing you're better you're good at doing other things like we all have our strengths and weaknesses Mm -hmm. and when it comes to like that's also what i had to do with that perspective shift was like they they can do that but you're better at doing something else you know which is like managing your life or managing your emotions or you know just fucking i don't know man and whatever whatever i don't know man whatever <laughs> well no whatever you're whatever you're good at is not that's you that's yours and it's going to yes, be it's exactly it's, it sounds it sounds a little corny and i wouldn't it say does. It if, if that's it, why i keep well, like pulling back from and it, I wanna be like, oh, i don't know with yeah with as much you know sincerity and and you know genuineness as i can like it's true like i i yeah. would never i can't do what you do but i can certainly do things that complement yours you know mm-hmm. and that's the thing that i love about collaboration whether it be on an art project or whether it be in business or whether it be in a relationship the idea yeah. I, I would never be able to collaborate when i was drinking because i didn't give a shit and i was selfish well, it was- it was all about us, like mm-hmm. all about me or all yeah. about you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, you were the you were the epicenter of this thing, not the project or whatever you were working on or and whatever you're trying yeah. to fix. So yeah. that collaboration is such a great thing, and you that's again where you start to go. 
when you're when you're collaborating with somebody and I'm, I'm like okay so where can i fill in the holes what can't this other person do or what does this other person right. need or how can i help build up this other person how can i hold them up how can i say hey you know i can do that thing that you need and you can do this other thing that i want or whatever it is yeah and so just and the, the you know the other thing about the resentments these days like what is it so i'm i just i got a little th- notification i guess i got 1300 days sober which is yeah. pretty cool the other day right I, was on. Like, I was like i was like damn but... that's yeah, a, that's, that's a long awesome. time it's a Be- long fucking time dude yeah cuz when i first started when i was on the uh the stop drinking subreddit i yeah. would watch that little thing and i'd be like i got 24 days i got hell yeah i got mm-hmm. 64 days and i was like i never thought that i'd get to 100 and i was like i got to 100 and then it was like yeah. i never thought i'd get to 365 and i was like oh shit and then I, f- yeah. I stopped counting, and now it's like 1,300. Yeah, you know? whoa. But those resentments toward people, toward normies, or toward anybody, really, I find that because I'm calmer and because I think about things and I think about the consequences of my actions before they mm-hmm. even leap out of my head, like the reaction time to those resentments is a lot quicker. Do you know what I mean? I go I like, so, oh, man, yeah. fuck that guy. Or, you know, why does he, why does she get to do that? And I don't. And then I go, oh, you mean your reaction to recognizing in, it, recognizing yes. it in my yes. head. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, the, the reaction time is quicker. So I'm like, yes. oh, well, you know why? Because you know what you're capable of. You're yeah. Now, you're an alcoholic, John, or you're, you're in long-term recovery. Yeah. So it's, it's, and that's such an awesome thing to be able to be like, oh, okay. Whew. Everything's fine. You're not, you don't have to panic. You know, there's there's other ways to blow off steam, whether mm-hmm. that be, I mean, I don't know what I used to. I used to binge eat a lot. Now, I mean, I yeah. guess I, I'll eat a whole watermelon now, but that doesn't feel. <laughs> <laughs> My cat can eat a whole watermelon. <laughs> I I bet you. Oh, is it a little one or a big? Just one, a little. Though? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. A mini watermelon. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm you just... meant like a you know, big pregnant one no, I was like, no, Son of no, a no bitch how do you not have diarrhea like everywhere <laughs> no no wow that would be no i'm not i'm not interested in that but um but yeah so i mean i guess what i'm saying is is that there's other ways and so like one of them that i found is exercise and i'm yeah. i don't want to i don't want to get on the high horse about exercise because i'm far from my my goal weight and my ideal level of fitness but um, just, it literally is putting in new patterns and new habits, right? New pathways, neural pathways. And the funny thing I've noticed about it too, is once you are able to figure out one discipline in your life, it becomes much easier to figure out other disciplines. They kind of mm-hmm. stack up in a similar way. So like once you kind of, I wouldn't say neither of us have mastered being sober, but once we've kind <laughs> of figured out the coping mechanisms and dealing with recovery and sobriety, um, when we try to do things like exercise or workout, at least on my end, I feel like it. I once I find that discipline and routine, it becomes a lot easier for me to run mm-hmm. through that, you know, because I'm aware of my behaviors and I can look at my behaviors and go, oh, right, that's that addictive part of your personality right there, you know. And um, even apply that that addictive part of your personality to something positive. Positive, exactly. And then use the tools I've learned within recovery and mm-hmm. uh, like therapy, I guess, to help myself, uh, you know cope with whatever hardship i'm having and dealing with those Mm -hmm. all that shit yeah yeah it's funny man so well and let me just let me just ask you real quick because you've yeah you've lost 50 pounds in the last nine months something like that 10 months since april so what's been yeah which is crazy almost a year 50 pounds in almost a year yeah um and everybody thinks i'm sick but i'm not sick man i feel great (laughs) (laughs) um so I, I would I would want to ask you what tools do you did you use and what was the point of like that moment where you were like I'm fucking done being being chubby I need to get on right this. well and that's the thing man because I started at 200 pounds 200 and like yeah about a little over 200 pounds probably two between two and 210 and now I'm at mm-hmm. like between 150 and 153 like I fluctuate but that doesn't matter mm-hmm. what tool you know what it is it's 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 the same thing as hitting a rock bottom right like I'm like. I feel like shit all the time. Like I always feel like shit. I'm always out of breath and like fucking always. I thought I had IBS. Like I couldn't eat food every time I eat. Like we'd go out to eat. And the minute I finished eating, I was like, fuck dude, I have to poop. 
I got poop like crazy right now. <laughs> like, why? Like, every time we got to eat, every single time, you know, and it had a lot to do with my weight, you know, but... Mm-hmm. Heartburn. I had heartburn constantly. I quit. I had heartburn the whole time I was drinking, man. Like I would like aspirate on my own bile in my sleep. You know, it was really bad. Then I sobered up and it went away for a little while. But then I started binge eating, you know, to make up mm-hmm. for not drinking. And so it came back, and I was like, why the fuck do I have heartburn? So yeah, I was hitting that rock bottom, and that was the same pattern as my alcoholism. It was hitting that rock bottom. Like I I can't manage my life like this anymore. I can't. It's just a, It's just. I think with yeah. being being overweight though it wasn't as hard as um being drunk. My rock, my bottom is being drunk, yeah, because like it was a manageable shitty I was feeling. Like it wasn't as unmanageable as like the being drunk all the time. But I would just I don't know, man. I just found a I didn't necessarily find a community like I did with a you know, with, with the twelve step program. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I I kinda like just dude, we have so many resources at our hands with everything. Yeah. With everything. You want to lose weight, you can find a resource. You can get an app for your phone. Even if you have an iPhone 4, you can get a fucking app for it. <laughs> Old-ass iPhone 4. You can. You know, you go to MyFitnessPal. There were so many resources. Even online, even if you want to quit but, drinking, you don't mm-hmm. want to do AA. There's so many more options for people now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's 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 amazing. And so I just use those options. You know, one of the things, too, that we're going to do... a um. I wanted to do this this season of the show is kind of explore in depth a little more different ways of recovery because I know yeah. what's worked for me and what's worked for you. And yeah. um, before I go into that real quick, I just wanted to say that I was just trying to bring up the point that correlated between your <clears throat> your weight loss and your sobriety was this 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 feeling of it being just unmanageable. Word. And that's that's that that that's that what tipping it is. point yeah. that thing where like mm-hmm. it finally just snaps and you're like. I can't fucking do this another day. How do I exactly. fix it? And exactly. The same thing. And happened realizing to me. it, it mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And that it's not a huge change immediately. Like it takes time. It mm-hmm. always takes time. Even with drinking, it always takes time. Yeah. Like twenty four hours sober is a hell of a feat though. Yes. Like it always amazes me. Twenty four hours sober is fucking amazing to me now because that's a bitch, dude. You know, if you you're sitting mm-hmm. out there at 24 hours under your belt. Congratulations, because that's a motherfucker. Yeah. You got a week? That's a that's a bigger motherfucker. Well, I don't know if it's a bigger mo- It's a whole different motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You know, those all early those, days, man. All them cats in them early days, man. That shit, I admire the hell out of that. I see that, and I'm like, that's gangster as fuck, dude. And my dad used to say that shit, and I used to think he was full of hot air, man. I'm like, really? You telling me the dude with 20 years is looking at the guy with you know 24 hours saying, "How'd you do it?" You know, and like. And I, I don't, time doesn't really matter because all we really got is 24 hours, you know, but coming fresh out of the rain like that and being like, oh, dude, glad you're here. You know, that's a hell of a thing. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I would, I, I just try not to, and especially in those early days when I think back on it now, and if I had any advice for myself, would be to not take my resentment so seriously. Yeah. And take then, it easy, right? Take, <laughs> take it, it easy. easy. Yeah. Take it easy. Let it go. You know, the, all these, all the, all these yep. fucking axioms and all these, um, what's little the other word? The little shit. sayings yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, they mottos. They're yeah. mottos. They're, they're, they sound so stupid and corny until you start to use them in your everyday life. And they actually, you're like, oh man, yeah, I just got to let it go. Oh, I just got to take it easy. Oh, right. One day at a time. Well, cause really right. I, I can't manage anything more than that. Dude, what's the difference between like chanting Om while you meditate and chanting mm. Easy Does It while you meditate? You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. a vehicle you can grab onto and use, and then eventually you're like, "Oh shit, that does make sense." You know, yeah. take it easy, Easy Does It. You know, I have these guys <laughs> telling me they're quitting drinking and they've been sober a week, and they're like, "I'm gonna quit smoking tomorrow," and I'm like, "Don't, don't quit smoking tomorrow, dude." <laughs> like, go get a fresh pack of you know marbles yeah. and a and a sheet cake. And you, get a sheet cake <laughs> and a fucking carton of cigarettes. We might have said this last week too, mm-hmm. you know. One thing at a time. Take it easy does it, dude. Like you don't need to buy the whole farm, dude. Just get some chickens <laughs> first, you know. There's a uh you've seen the, have you seen that show Flaked on um Netflix with Will yeah. Arnett? Yeah, I love so it. So if you it. haven't watched it, go check it out. I don't want to give anything away. I don't want to ruin anything cuz I really enjoyed it too. Yeah. Um but it does revolve around um AA and dealing with alcoholism. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that uh, they were talking, and I don't remember who said it to who, 
But they said something about like the guy's like, man, that guy doesn't have an alcohol problem. He's got a platitude problem because this yeah. guy would always be spouting off, you know, easy does it or whatever like easy that. Nobody wants yeah. nobody wants to One hear that shit when they're having a hard day. No, <clears throat> really? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, for real, like my old sponsor would do that shit to me a lot. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. word, really? Is this what we're doing? Like, I'm having a total horrible life crisis. And then looking back on it, I'm like, God, that wasn't bad at all. Like, oh. Oh, well, in the moment, it was a mm-hmm. definite mountain, you know. But I don't know, man. I, uh, I'm i just, I, I guess the point of it all is I still feel that way sometimes. But yeah. I, I have to I have to have a perspective change. Yeah, I really do have to sit down and like kind of meditate on it, walk away. We do a lot of walking away on this podcast. We're like, <laughs> just, just fucking run. Just run for your fucking life. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, especially if you think yeah. you're going to drink, man. If you're going to... um. If you are, if it, if your sobriety is at risk for any 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 reason at all, I say get out of there. I think about it too yeah. when I've, again, I started working behind the bar again, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I remember smelling this particular. It was it, like yeah. some lemongrass or something like that, and I was kind of, because I was trying to make a drink for this person, and I'm smelling it, and it's like I got my nose in a bottle of vodka, Jerry. Now, yeah, I don't feel the urge to fucking turn it upside down and like lose my mind, but I'm just like. I have to remind myself, John, if this ever feels like something that's going to go any further, then you need to walk away from this fucking yeah. job. ASAP. Throw that bottle against the wall and <laughs> run for your Shatter life. Shatter it. You know, you remind leave. me of bartending. You remind me of that Rutger Hauer movie where he was a blind fucking ninja. That's <laughs> blind you. Fury? Blind Fury, right? Because your detriment is you have to make these fancy drinks, but you cannot taste any of the alcohol. It's like <laughs> you're just Rutger Hauering it back there with your cane and shit. Just... <laughs> Well, he doesn't need the cane when he gets angry. No, he right? doesn't. He just puts it aside, <laughs> folds it up, puts it in his coat. You know, that's Kicks like you. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I I haven't had a drink sent back yet. So, I mean, I still do my job, but it's again, it's that you know we talked about it last week. But if at any point sobriety seems even in question, I would I would leave. I would I would yeah. quit the job. I would just say I'm yeah. sorry. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about. You know, I thought about this that night when I had a, my nose in a bottle of vodka to see if this mm-hmm. would would go well with this drink. And I was like, well, what do I say? Because I don't want to seem weak. And I was like, man, it's not weak. You don't need to fucking explain yourself to anybody. Ah, just be like, yo, I don't drink. I'm allergic to alcohol. I'm allergic take to my alcohol. D- and you d- know what? I yeah. thought I could do this. <clears throat> I can't do this. I'm really sorry. Yeah. You know, so I'm, every time I, I drink, I break out and <laughs> taking my dick out in front of everybody. <laughs> exactly. What a weird allergy. When's the next yeah. holiday party? Um, yeah. So <laughs> Who wants to see it. So yeah. y- it's just like that that kind of thing where I have to remind myself that it's that I'm not weak, that I can, you know, if I have to make certain choices, then I just have to make certain choices, man. Right. And not to exactly. let anything build up to some resentment and you know like like you said I, this happens still happens not all the time right. but I, yeah i had a moment last friday night that's yep. th- three days ago or whatever and so. the big thing we, we don't don't resent yourself over it either <clears throat> you know, we you, it's you can't resent yeah. yourself over it you are what you are man you're the sum of your goddamn parts it's mm-hmm. all right you're it's still, all right america it's you are, and, and, and maybe New most Zealand of europe and, China and, and it, we had we have a, got a couple of listeners in Africa and Brazil. It's all right, global community. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hey man, global community of recovery of hell um, yeah wellness of um of just being a part of something bigger than yourself, and that's 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 another huge part in letting go of resentments. If you if you have something bigger than yourself, if it's just the group of people that you that you your recovery community in your town, whether it's listening to us or being on the stop drinking, uh, subreddit. Yeah. Let, check that out. If that you got a resentment, rad. send it off, send me, email me your resentments. I would be happy to listen and reply. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I we'll mean? We'll talk about them shits. <laughs> Hell yeah. So if I you've can... got some resentments, yeah, please yeah. release them. We're made of resentments. Yes. That's, this whole podcast is us dealing with our resentments. It helps us get pretty them out. much, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, everybody's doing it, but you don't. You don't have to, man. And and it's it's not it, it's not a. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to. You're not missing out on anything. What's it? FOMO. Right. There's no. There's no there's FOMO. No FOMO. There's, there's no, no FOMO, FOMO. Bromo.
Thanks again for listening. Our music, as always, is by Neglect. You can find more of his stuff at neglect.bandcamp.com. And you can find us on all social media platforms that matter, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can reach us at aisforalcoholic at gmail.com. Talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs>